this, my pastor thought the world was 6,000 years old. On the other hand, I read C.S. Lewis. He didn't seem to, to care about the age of the earth. And I, I have to say, uh, and I'm very grateful for this, I had the exciting freedom to just ask these questions and follow the scientific evidence and the biblical interpretive evidence where, they, where I felt that they led. Uh, so I dealt with the, uh, the age of the earth and evolutionary theory, and um, I never felt my faith dependent on the answers to those questions. And in closing, I'd like to say, um, I don't think yours does either. So I, I want to say that one of the reasons we're here is not to persuade you of a particular answer to these. Uh, but whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, uh, just to encourage the open exploration of these issues. So did you come to a, a point of view on those in terms of how to, how to think about them and, and like, a, a, like a final landings place? Well, I'm still working on some of the questions, but I, I, I believe that a number of the issues that we'll be discussing tonight, I, I felt that the scriptures gave me freedom to follow the scientific data where it led on most of those issues. Um, and so that sounds like one way to kind of resolve this and, you know, to kind of view that what's in Genesis gives us freedom. We don't actually have to believe that there's only one way how this happened. Uh, that, that's an attractive solution because it, it doesn't challenge a lot of things that we hear in scientific class. But is that really consistent with Genesis? Is it really possible, for example, to believe in Genesis that it's God's word but then also believe that in evolution? Is that possible, Tremper? Well, first of all, let me say how happy I am to be on a panel with two scientists, because I'm not a scientist, <laughs> nor the son of a scientist. <laughs> and, um, and I would very quickly display my ignorance in that area. Uh, but in answer to your question, Josh, yes, I do think that Genesis uh, is consistent with evolution. It doesn't teach evolution, obviously. And this gets to your issue of giving us freedom. Uh, I would argue that Genesis 1 and 2 and the rest of the Bible tells us an awful lot about God. Genesis 1 and 2 most graphically that, or most dramatically that God is the creator of everything and everybody. But it doesn't tell us how God created the cosmos or human beings. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.